Uh, my name is Kevin Justice. I'm actually the one that works with all the students from here. Um, I've had Holyoke High School, this whole area, this area in Springfield, I've had for I don't know, 18 years of my career at Keene State. Um, I've been there for 20, this is my 21st year working there. Um, so very familiar with the school. I've done various different programs here. I'll be, I think you guys are doing the application day, but it's going to be virtual, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah, so I'll be a part of that. Um, I think I'm, I'm trying to do both days. I might have to just do Thursday, I think. So it's Thursday, Friday, right? Yes. That's when it got changed to. Mm -hmm. um, but I'll be here for application days. That said, you don't have to wait to apply to Keene State because our application is free online. So like we have the application days, which are great because you can do free applications, you can get your decision back. But if you apply now, we're starting to read this week, I'd get you a decision within a couple of days. So it's a pretty quick turnaround once we have all your information. So if you you know you want to apply and you want to apply for free, save the money, um, you can just do the Keen State app online, which is which is really nice. Um, have you guys been to Keen before? Mm -hmm. I think right. one of the cheerleaders, so I'm a cheerleader at yes. school. She goes there. Okay, and is she cheering at Keen? I'm not sure if she cheers, but okay. Are you going to try to cheer in college? Most likely. Yeah. Okay, awesome. Yeah, and it's a competition squad. I always tell any cheerleader that's interested, do you know how to tumble? Because that's a big piece because they do that competition stuff down in Florida, and so you know it's just important that you, know, you can do that. That's part of making our team. Um, but, okay, so on the back of that brochure that I gave you, there's actually a map. Um, you can see where we're located. It's not far from here. It took me an hour and five minutes to get here this morning. Um, so pretty quick trip, just right up 91, and then you get into Vermont, or you can cut through Massachusetts. It's a few minutes off the highway. Um, it's a nice location, um, very different than here, but it's definitely not. It's definitely not a city area. The city of Keene is is really it surrounds the college, but the reality is that it's not. Um, you know, you're driving up through the sticks to get up there. You're driving through mountains and rivers and streams, but then you pop into Keene, and it's like an oasis in the middle of the desert because you have the community right around the college. So like. Where the college is located, on one side you have downtown Keene, you walk across the street, shops, stores, restaurants right there. On the back side of campus you got Walmart, you got TJ Maxx, you got a bunch of restaurants, you got a movie theater. Everything's within a five to ten minute walk of the center of campus. So you don't need a car. You can bring a car though. If you have a car that you want to bring to college, we actually allow our first year students to bring a car. But you'll never use it other than to come home when you decide to come home. Um, we just had a visitor weekend this last weekend. Which was a, we had a, we have a three day weekend, which is for um, you know the, the uh, Indigenous Peoples um, holiday that was on Monday, but we do it Friday, Saturday, Sunday, so that our students get a break in the middle of the, the year to go home, um, so they can go home for a break. Most of the times, our students don't go home. I mean, it's a busy campus. There's a lot going on. The city being right around the college kind of benefits that. Um, so that's kind of what you can expect in the city of Kim when you come up to visit. You should definitely make a trip up, you know, and check it out. I mean, it's not that far of a drive. And it's, it's you know, a place that kind of gives you a different perspective on the type of colleges that are out there. It's very different than schools around here because you're more, you know, urban area around here. And so it's very different. Um, we are a liberal arts school, which means basically that we have our degree programs, but then we have a, a series of courses that you have to take as a part of this outside curriculum. Um, and basically what that does is that builds the skills that you need to kind of go out into the workforce and be effective. You know, Keene is one of the top 10 schools in New York, New Jersey, Pennsylvania, and New, and New England for job placement. We're actually we've placed top 10 for, I believe it's 10 years in a row. So our students graduate and go get jobs, which is ideal. So what do you two want to study? What are you thinking? Um, I'm like between criminal justice and nursing. Okay, awesome. And what about you? I'm a sports management and a business major. Sports management and business, okay. Awesome, so you saw the sports management in there. And then the, the, with the criminal justice kind of pathway, what are you thinking with that? Um, I'm thinking forensic science. Okay, that's what I was, I was going to ask yeah. because of the combination there. And so what our students normally do with that is they do, you know, you obviously have that choice of site. You can do biology, you can do chem. I mean, there's a lot of sciences in yeah. forensic science. You can do computer science. So you never know where you'll end up. Um, but really, a lot of our students will do double majors. In, in you know criminal justice and then X degree to prepare them, prepare them for that that you know master study in forensics maybe doctorate depending on how far you go. Um, what's your show of choice? Um, what do you watch? What do you watch on TV? You gotta watch Law and Order. Law and Order. Yes, okay. I love it. I get more Criminal Minds most of the time, but yeah, I when it's said forensics, so, but like Olivia, and, like I I love it. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. I meant to discover it. 
Oh yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. I mean, there's great shows on TV about yeah. it. And the nice part is, is you got to sprinkle those kind of shows mm -hmm. with the more factual-based shows so that you get a sense of what the career is really like. Yeah. Because obviously they glorify the, the whole thing being one job where it's not yeah. versus the aspects of it to find out whether you want forensics or if you want to be a police officer, you know, depending on your detective or however you want to go through it. Um, but we have great placements in either. Um, and like I said, we place you know almost all of our students anyway. But the nice part is, is that a lot of our curriculum is built around the ability to double major. So you can do criminal justice and psychology without even taking extra classes than what a normal student takes to graduate from Keene. You can end up with two, two um, majors. So it's easy to do that. Um, what you can expect at the college as far as academics, average class size of about 20, big classes, maybe 35 to 40, small classes, 5 to 10. As you get to your upper level classes, the classes shrink. You know, they get a lot smaller. And that's when you're in your main content for your degree program. You're going to be in classes where there's a lot of discussion. You're rarely ever in a classroom that has a lecture or is set up like a lecture hall. We only have three lecture halls on campus. Um, and only two of them, well, actually only one of them is bigger than, than 50 people. And I've never seen any of them more than about half to three quarters full. Um, and so you really can expect small classes. Now, do you both enjoy participating in class, like talking, speaking, presenting, those kind of things? Because that's something that you're going to do at our at our school. Because that's kind of the foundation of what we do is really get you involved in the education. So whether it's small group learning or if it's um, you know giving a presentation to a class, if it's a question and answer session in class, we're not about just lecturing to you all day, like doing what I'm doing right now, right? Just talk, talk, talk. It gets boring if that's all you get, right? <laughs> so we want to make it interactive, and, and we even, even in our biggest classroom, which is our Science 101 class, which is actually can seat 100 students if we ever needed to, it's never been full, like I said. I haven't I've, I've even seen that, that thing more than half full for a class. Um, but the reality is, is even in that classroom, all the rows are tiered in, like, very similar to this, where it's, it's two rows, because we want people in the front row to turn around and be able to get in a discussion with people in the back row in our biggest you know, classroom space because we do so much small group discussion. So, you know, you've got to be active in the classroom. And I always tell students, you know, if you want a big lecture hall, you know, where you can kind of hide in the back, don't come to Keen. <laughs> because it's not going to happen there. You know, our professors are going to interact with you. Now, the benefit of that is you get to know your professors. Within the first week of school, they're going to know who you are. They're probably going to know a lot about you by the end of the second week. And then, as you grow up through your education, they become your allies for job placement, for internships, for co-ops, for work studies, like all those kind of things that you can do are, are provided by your faculty members. And they're professionals in the field. So it's just a great you know, way to learn, you know, having that kind of heightened experience. And we're all about test driving your degrees. We're very hands-on in everything you do. So whether it's you know, getting out in the field that you're looking to do and working with local, you know, entities that have that, being this thing integrated into the community, it makes it easy for us. Um, or if it's it's something that you want to do uniquely either back home or maybe you want to travel across the country and do it, we have opportunities for that as well. And we're big on that that kind of exploratory experiential learning. It's, it's really part of what we do. Um, that's kind of the classroom structure. Any questions on that stuff? No, I actually like interacting with other people. Yeah, it makes it more fun, right? Yeah. Yeah, so what do you do outside of school? Outside of like your academics, like class? Like do you, are you involved in anything here? Other, I mean, obviously you're cheerleading, right? But what else? Um, do you work? I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm a hostess right now. Where at? And I'm, I'm kind of a girl. Nice. Yeah. yeah. One of my favorite places to stop by when I come through here. Yeah. <laughs> it's, I actually love my job. Like the people there, like the diversity is like really good. Like everyone's nice to each other. Like it's a really good thing. That's awesome. What else do you guys do? To work? I, sure. be, I babysit a lot. Too. Babysit some more work. It's a lot of work. Yeah. <laughs> what about you? Do you work? Yeah. What do you do? I'm a dishwasher at like a pub in order. Nice. That, the, the, those kind of jobs trans, translate to other jobs, you know, when you're in college, which is nice. And, and like I said, with the location of the college, everything's walkable. So you get a job off campus. I always tell students off campus is better, especially students that are not from New Hampshire, because you make more money out here than our students make on campus because we yeah. pay minimum wage and our minimum wage is like $7. Oh my so, God. Yeah, it's crazy, right? Crazy. No. So, but if you work off campus, you get paid, you know, $10, 15 yeah. like it is way more. So it's always better to, to do that off-campus employment yeah. rather than doing on-campus employment. Um, so I always encourage students to transfer your job if you want to work while you're in college. Now, we do have opportunities to work on campus. The benefit of doing that is really that you get to be on campus, which means sometimes 
you can actually um, work on campus and do your homework for work. Like I, one of my favorite places for, for my students, I coach basketball at the school, I'm one of the women's basketball coaches. I love when my athletes have laundry because literally they have an hour where their only job is to put stuff in the laundry and hit the button and then they can sit and do homework for that hour and then they do the same thing for drying it and they get two hours of studying done while they get paid, yeah. which is awesome. That's awesome. That's cool. But you got to touch sweaty laundry. Yeah. Yeah. That's That's cool. Yeah. yeah, they give you gloves. They give you gloves. You can definitely do it. But I mean, you, you know, right? You're getting paid to just sit there and do homework, which yeah. is great. You know, but it's a job. You know. So anyway, so lots of opportunities for that kind of stuff. The reason why I ask that question is because we do have a lot of other opportunities to get involved. And most times, students leave high school and they have whatever they're into that you do. You know, whatever that is, you do. But when you get to college, there's so many other opportunities. So like, there's there's 82, I think, clubs and organizations that are all student run, and those go from everything like, you know, something in your degree program, to things like, you know, ski and snowboard, paintball. Um, there's a gaming club. There's all kinds of random, you know, spinoff clubs. You know, so depending on what you're interested in, or maybe interested in, you're probably going to get involved beyond what you currently are in high school. And we really encourage that. Um, we also offer scholarships for the type of involvement that you are currently in. So like for instance, in your workplace, be very um, explicit on adding that into your extracurricular activities and telling us what you do there. Because if there's any sort of like, you know, leadership, like if you advance through and become a manager or if you're a shift leader or something like that, those kind of things can, use to, can, can be used to create opportunities for me to give you free money. Right? And we all like free money. And once again, that's another one of those incentives, right? Like you have, you, if you have involvement and it fits a certain criteria, I can give you money for college, which is awesome, right? To get more money. It cuts that cost that we were talking about at the beginning. Um, so I think that's really important to, to make sure that you're very um, you know, detailed in your extracurricular activities. Um, yeah, so you know, involvement's a big thing in the college, and whether you want to do it as a as a you know as a varsity athlete, or if you want to do intramurals or or do something just for fun, you can do that. And then you have the community, like I said, that's around the college, so there's a lot going on out there as well. Um, as far as admissions is concerned, like I was telling you at the beginning, we're going to start reading this week. I'm just waiting for our final letters to get run, and they're going to turn on our our ability to do it. We're going to start reading. Um, I read to the day. My students that complete their application, really all, if you do the Keene State app, all you need is the application, your college essay, and your college essay can be your common app essay. I don't care which one you submit with the Keene State app. Um, and then your transcript, that's all we need. Um, so if you submit all that stuff to me, the day that I get it, it'll either be read that night or the next morning. So it's really fast. You get a decision back immediately. As soon as I hit submit, it comes to you electronically. You can check the status of your application. Um, what that means is you'll have a decision right after you apply. Doesn't it's not early action or early decision. There's no binding, you know, piece of it. It's really just for you so that you have that and you can move on in the process. Same thing's true with financially. Right at the beginning of November, we start sending out packages. If you have applied for financial aid during the month of October, you've been admitted during the month of October, you will get a package early in November. Just means that you now know how much it's going to cost. The other thing that that gives you is an opportunity to have a discussion with me on how we can make it cheaper, which I think is, is always important, you know, when you talk about that, that debt load and everything. And I always tell every student, when you get a financial aid package from a school, you should always write an appeal letter to the financial aid office to try to get them to give you more money, okay? Worst thing they can tell you is no. Best thing, they give you more money, right? So you might as well ask, okay? The application process goes like this. First thing I do is I read your essay. I love college essays. It's my absolute favorite thing to, to review as a college essay. I like to read about you. I like to read about you from your eyes, from your words, from your mouth, from your hand, whatever you want to say. But that means that you have to write about yourself in your essay. Have you guys looked at the essay questions? Not yet. I would highly suggest doing that, just so you have a, an idea. Now, are you both seniors? No, we're juniors. Juniors, okay. If you look now, because there's no too early of a time to actually start evaluating what you're gonna write your essay on and start thinking about ideas, just to kind of get a sense of it. And all that takes is reading the questions to find out what your options are. Um, the big thing about the essay is that, you know, you have to write about yourself. Do you guys like talking about yourselves a lot? It's, it's hard to do, and it's even harder to write about. And so, I always tell students, 
if you make me like you through your application, and really that essay is the big piece of the application, um, the first thing I read is that essay, and the reason why is because if you can make me really want to have you at Keen during that essay time, I'm going to admit you, period. I will find a way to get you in, okay? That means you got to spend time on it, not to put more pressure on you, because it is one of the pieces yeah. of the application that everybody is like terrified of. Um, but I want to read about you, first and foremost, right? Then I'm going to go to your transcript. Transcript, our average students at 3132 GPA, so right around a BB plus average is like our middle group of students. Gives you a range from about a 2.5 to a 4 point whatever, because we use your weighted GPA. Um, and so that's the kind of student I'm looking for. Your graduation requirements from here will meet our requirements for admission as far as classes. But if you've taken any honors classes or AP classes, I love to see that in subjects that, you, that you're strong in. Um, I always advise students, don't go crazy. Don't go taking seven or eight AP classes unless you can really do seven or eight AP classes. You can do it if you want to, but make sure that you're capable of achieving and those could be expected to see that. Um, but I always think students should sample size those. Do you guys take any upper level classes? Yeah, we take AP classes. Awesome. Perfect. We, we take most of the honors, so it's like it's a college course. Yeah. And yes. it like kind of knocks out. If you want, I took AP Lang and AP um, Euro. Yeah. But it got like knocked out with college classes. I like that. So you get credits from Westville. Yes. Awesome. So those will all transfer. And basically all you have to do to get those is you just have to request your transfer from Westville. They'll send a transcript to us and then we'll we'll give you credit for those. And then if you if you do AP classes and you take the AP exam, we also offer credits for that. Um, majority of our, our test requirements are three or better on the exam and then you get credits. And some classes actually offer you up to eight credits. So you can get more than just one class worth of credits. So definitely worth doing. And the more credits you can transfer in, obviously it's going to make the experience cheaper because you can graduate early. We also, on a side note, some of the degrees that you guys are looking at are what we call degree of three programs, which means if you stick with one degree, you can actually knock it out in three years and get in and out early. So if you have credits transferring in, and then you do the degree in three option, you could actually get a four year degree in two and a half years, which would cut your costs significantly yes. uh, yeah. you know, if you're not paying for four years. So just keep that in mind as you're taking these, these AP classes and getting credit. That's a huge benefit to you when you when you go to college, oh, you know, depending on if they accept those credits. You know, so as many as you can get, get them. Um, so yeah, so I'll, I'll take a look at the transcript, I'll take a look at your extracurricular activities, obviously for the reasons that I stated, and to see if I can give you some, some more free money. We don't require SATs, they are optional for our students. Um, you know, if you want to submit them, you can. The nursing field, I always tell students who are in, into nursing, you should probably take a couple SATs, maybe three times, just because you need the testing in your background, because you have to take the NCLEX exam. And if, you're, and if you're going to take the NCLEX exam, it's just like a harder SAT based on nursing. Yeah. And so you need to get, the reason why I, have, I tell my students to take it is because I like to see what your test scores are so that when we're evaluating what we can do to help you, we can actually take a look at how you test and if there's an area of weakness, we can work on that area of weakness to get you ready for the NCLEX exam. So it kind of informs what we do with you when we're doing test prep, um, which I think is huge. Um, the other thing you should shoot for with nursing is a 530 on your math nursing. That's, that's a big score as far as students who score over that mark do really well on the nursing exam and students that score below that struggle on the nursing exam. So wherever you are on that spectrum, you want to make sure that you're trying to hit that 530 or higher. Um, but not required for us. Maybe next year. We've had SATs as a requirement, but we took them away the last couple years because of COVID. That could change for nursing. Um, but just keep that in mind. Um, trying to think of what else for that. Oh, and nursing requirements. Got to have four years of math, four years of science, mandatory. So you want to make sure you're in your junior year, so you should be already yeah. three. Just make sure you take them next year. What if you've doubled up one year? So this would be like my fourth year math. You get those marks. You get those four and four. Like all four? Like yep. All you, go. you don't have to have four separate years of it. You have to have four. Yeah, so like, you know, if you did, you know, if you're up to like pre-calculus at this point, then you've taken out for one, out for two, geometry and pre-calc, you're good. Um, you know, the one thing I would caution anybody about if you're going to be going into a field that requires some math is that if you take a whole year off your senior year and then try to go back to college level math, it's going to be a jump because you haven't thought about math for an entire year. So I would always suggest taking, even if it's, you know, if you're a pre-calc, and you don't want to take a, a hardcore math your senior year, 
take like financial management or take a, you guys have to have one of those courses that's like a, a real life math, a senior math. We only have math? to do really hard math classes after What are they? We have calculus and AP stats. I take AP stats. That's actually a great course. Mm -hmm. Is it? Yeah. Yeah, and it's not, if you've done pre-calc, you'll, are you, are you doing all game pre-calc? I'm struggling. How bad? Are you going to pass it? You need to I'm, passing, I'm passing it. It's just, testing-wise, no. I would take, I would take AP stats, to be honest with you. Um, it's going to be easier than calculus. I, I got my degree in math, just that's why, that's what, that's what I studied in college. In my I used to be really good at math, and then COVID hit, and then all my math was in but this is okay. So, but this this reinforces my point about a year of no, non-traditional math. Like, if you take a year off, you're going to have that same issue when you do because you're going to have math requirements regardless of what you study. At almost every school you go to, sometime during your freshman year or sophomore year, it has a requirement for completion of your degree program. So, if you take a complete year off, that math class that's required is going to be very difficult because you're not going your mind's not going to be thinking about it. Just like when you didn't have the instruction that you were used to you dropped off in math, the same thing will happen. And math's unique to that. It's, some, it's a skill that you lose if you don't practice it, unless you really are really into it, which is not a lot of us that are really into math. Some people like that scare me. I'll never remember. Yeah, it's terrible. Mm -hmm. Listen, it, it's a special skill set. Like, it's, it's one of it the It really things. is. I used to have that special skill set. Now it's gone. Well, you probably do. You just lost it a little bit in your non-traditional teaching. Like, that's that's what I happened. Think, I think it's just the teaching way, because some teachers will really just knock it out of the park for me. I'm sure. Like, well, that's, and that's what we need is more than that. Mm -hmm. In the end, we need them bad. Yes. Uh, the one, are you slaying? Mm-hmm. <laughs> <laughs> not, not a raving review that of that. Man. That man. Oh, my God. <laughs> All right, so what questions do you guys have about anything? What, what do you want to know about anything? Your division sports. Division three. Division three. Ridiculously competitive. We've actually been... In, in my time at King, well, actually, guys, since we've been Division Three, which has been the last 21 years, this will be 22, we've been the number one or number two public school in New England out of all public schools. We've been first or second. The other school that we compete with all the time, we were 16 years, we've been number one, and the other five, Eastern was number one, out of Connecticut, we were number two. So, I mean, it's outstanding as far as the competition. What do you like? Or cheerleading, you're doing cheerleading. Cheerleading, softball, and track. Okay. Yeah, and track and field, to be honest with you, and it hurts me to say it because, like I said, I'm a basketball coach, is probably our best sport. Um, we've had uh, 12 to 15 national champions since I've been a king. How's like, shot national put? Champions. How's shot put? Shot put's good. Our, we actually have a woman that, that came in right before COVID, so it would have been two years ago, who has already broken all of our marks at the school and will probably be a national competitor. But I mean, we had a, a male athlete that won three or four national titles, both indoor and outdoor. Um, they graduated maybe like five years ago. So I mean, with track, it's tough because we have a lot of students that qualify for national. But winning the national title means you're the best in the sport. So we just celebrated a, a young woman who was the high jump national champion, both indoor and outdoor. She's one of six women to ever win both in the same season. Six women in the country. That's so cool. Yeah. It's crazy. Yeah, she was pretty special. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, but anyway, it, great program. <laughs> great program. What else? What else do you want to know about? Oh, do you guys have a broad program? Say again. Do you guys have a broad program? Yeah, we do. And we and, and so abroad works a couple different ways. Like right now, obviously, no one's accepting Americans in their country, so yeah. no one's going. <laughs> they don't like it. Um, but you know, <laughs> try to do that. They don't. Like they don't. They don't right now. <laughs> um, <laughs> I'll leave the reason why I took myself. Um, but, um, so, so yeah, traditionally we send students all over the place. I mean, Western Europe really popular, Australia's really popular, South America's popular. Um, Asia's become more and more popular as we have more students going out there to teach English. Um, so I mean, all over. We have a Spanish major and a French major at Keene State, and so because of both of those, we have mandatory travel required in South America and then in Spain and then in France. And so we have great connections with those countries as far as getting you know students out there for those specific language kind of intensive um, study abroad. Um, but we'll send students pretty much anywhere. Um, we've had students on every continent set, except Antarctica, obviously, because where are you going to send them? Anywhere? Well, yeah, yeah, they um, so they they can go pretty much anywhere. It just depends on where you want to travel. We also do domestic travel, so so you know we have students in Alaska and then California and Puerto Rico and you know all over the, the U.S. So you can do both national and international exchange with us. 
Sometimes, depending on where you go and what your degree program is, there's credits that you can get that directly fill into your degree. Most of the time, it's going to be gen ed when you do it, unless you're studying something like a history or a, or a language or something like that, where it just kind of you know fills in for a different class you would take. Um, students travel any time between their sophomore year and their senior year. We also offer shorter abroad experiences that students can do that are like, you know, two, three, four week experiences during their summer. So like, you don't want to miss a whole semester. You can actually do other type of experiences. And then we do community service trips as well, where we travel internationally as well as nationally to do community service for like two week trips. And the best part about those is they're really cheap. Like it usually costs, you know, we had students who went to Ecuador a few years ago. It was, it was literally 400 bucks for a full trip, including plane flight, housing, food, all the excursions they did, it cost each student 400 bucks and that was it. So that was awesome for a weekend after that was yeah. pretty awesome. And they had a lot more fun than the community service that they did from the yeah. pictures. They did a lot of neat stuff in addition to the work they did. Um, but big on, we, we, we really like to get our students those opportunities to, to study abroad. Yeah, well, I've been working in French for three years. I'll say there you go. Yeah, and I was just like, I want to travel, so. Yeah, I will tell you one of the things, one of my biggest regrets in college was not, well, one, not doing study abroad. I played basketball, which is a two sport, you know, a two uh, semester sport, so it was very hard for me to give that up. Yeah. So I never traveled when I was in college, and then I stopped taking Spanish class when I went to college. I had five years through AP, I did both conversation, I did, you know, the Spanish language test, and, and just stopped. And that was my biggest regret. So I, if you have French in your background as far as taking it, you should continue taking it in college. Yeah. to keep the language. Because yeah. you do lose it after a couple of years of not using it if it's not your, your main language. Um, yeah, biggest regret. So take French. <laughs> what else? What else do you want to know about? If any of It's a lot of information. Is this the second one you, you sat through? Yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. What were you going to ask us? Um, are you guys like a big football school? No football. No football? No football. Rugby. Rugby. Wow. Our guys don't wear pads. That's don't wear pads. I don't know how people can play. Like, <laughs> oh my god. That's insane. I, that's probably one of the big questions. Nah, we don't have football. And I get I get that. I get that question a lot. I mean, basketball is a big sport. Um, that's, that's I, I think it's a product yeah. of the fact that it's a winter sport. Yeah. And it's really our biggest winter sport. I mean, hockey is big and keen as well. Oh, hockey? Oh, yeah, well, there's hockey, and it, but it's a club sport. But we're we've been to the national tournament for a club four years in a row, so it's just as good as most Division three mm -hmm. program. Mm -hmm. They get to go to Dallas to, to play. So Dallas, oh yeah, it's crazy. crazy. Um, they play on TV. Yeah, I, I mean, it, it, the athletic program at Keene is outstanding. Like mm -hmm. it's it's outstanding, both as a as a viewer and as an athlete. You know, either way you go. Um, but yeah, we just don't have football. Which is, which, I, I love football too, I, I spend my Saturdays and Sundays, that's all I do is watch football. What else, what else do you want to know about? Any um, questions? you got a captive audience here. How's your diversity? Yeah, great question. Um, so, very different than here, very different than here. Um, you know, in 2007, when I first started doing my current position, which actually has to do with students of color, supporting students of color, recruiting students of color, um, all that kind of stuff. Um, we were literally, we had 40 students out of 5,000 students on our campus each year. 40 out of 5,000. Crazy, right? What was that? Oh, yeah, all white kids. And well, the crazy thing is, is, so New Hampshire is about a percent, you know, person of color in the state. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So, so over the, the last, you know, 14 years or so, we've grown our population to almost 12% of the population. So it's grown significantly. We're one of the, the most diverse schools in New Hampshire. Um, we're even more diverse percentage-wise than UNH, age, than Plymouth, the other big state schools in our state, yeah. in our state, which is great because both of them are closer to population centers like Concord and Manchester and yeah. Nashville that are very diverse, but yet we're still drawing more students. Um, so it is a very different, you know, place than here. And I always tell students, I, I, you know, Keen is a, it takes a special student of color to come to Keen and be able to deal with the experience you're going to have there because it's a very different experience. Not negative, not positive, it's just different. Um, and, and students need to prepare themselves for us. I always tell students if they've never been up and they're like, I want to go to Keno, I just come and visit. You can sit down with one of, one of our students of color and have a conversation, find out what it's really like. Like, you know, I don't sit in on those conversations. I actually put you in a room and say, go have at it and tell my students you answer the questions. Like, period. Like, answer questions. Because I want my students to come and know what to expect when they come. 
Um, you know, so it, it's a very good place. We do have a lot of, um, you know, support on our campus for, for our students of color. We have a um, multicultural student support office that's headed by Kaya Ramanpour, who's actually one of my former students, um, who uh, was one of our diversity leadership students when she came into the college. Um, you know, there's, there's, you know, support there, um, but it's a very majority campus, yeah. you know, extremely majority campus. And there's, there's, you know, there's been a growth in faculty of color as well as students of color who, who continue to just get more and more, um, but it is very, very different than yeah. you know, So that's kind of what it's been. Yeah. What else? It's a great question. Important question. What are your main events at the school? Main events? Great question. Like charity fundraisers or I mean we do we do it I mean like I said it, it's a busy busy yeah. campus so like you know the biggest events that we have on campus outside of like our big like college events like like graduation and stuff like that we have our our spring concert uh, which is a big weekend there's carnivals there's uh, uh, some kind of artist that that comes obviously last year we didn't do that um, I think I don't know two three years ago. Janae was still in charge of it. Um, so I think three years ago we had uh, A Boogie. Oh, you know it's A Boogie. Is it A Boogie or J Boogie? What it's is it? Okay. Yeah. I always mess that up, and, and all my students laugh at me when I mess that up because you know I'm not. Cur I'm kind of current. But, like I listen to hip hop, but I don't so know. He's very popular. Yeah, very popular. But yeah. it was right before. It was right before he really hit though. Like his his album had just come out, and Janae Graham, who's a student from East Hartford, Connecticut, one of my students also a leadership student, was in charge of the committee. And so she actually, as a part of what she did in student government, she was in charge of recruiting the act for concert. And so she found three artists that were up and coming that she thought were gonna hit really close to when our concert went. Yeah. And he was the one who the student body selected to come. And so we you know, got him on contract and everything and brought it and his album dropped. His concert sold out in I think 35 minutes online. We had online ticket sales at that point. It literally sold out like that. It was crazy. Like, and it only to our student population. Yeah. So other people couldn't come. So like, it literally just. I mean, tickets were gone immediately after they posted, which was crazy. Um, but like, but we had. I mean, we've had. You know, we had him most recently. We had J Cole. We right when J Cole was coming. No um, You know, I, we've had great, great hip hop artists. We've also had some country artists. We've had yeah. some some rock art. Uh, Chris. Well, that's because I listen to hip hop. Um, you know, we had rock bands. We had rock bands like OAR and Guster back at the beginning when they were first coming up. So, like, they, we really do a strategic kind of, you know, push towards certain. I mean, we had Buster Rhymes come to campus. Like, I mean, it's crazy the the people who yeah. we had. Um, but the point is, is less about. It's a big event, right? We've had comedians, like my favorite that has come was Gabriel Iglesias came to campus and performed, which that was dope. Okay. That was very, very cool. That was not long ago. That was probably five, five or six years ago. So he was popular then. Yeah. That, I mean, he was very popular then. So that was pretty cool when he came because he's, he's big you? time. Um, yeah, and, yeah, and just absolutely hysterical. <laughs> Um, but so that's that's you know we do we do concerts we do comedians we have you know these more adult themed hypnotists and magicians yeah. come like you know you have all that kind of stuff we have um, smaller competitions like we have the battle of the bands where artists from the the region come and Matt perform Miller? in a competition oh yeah we have Matt Miller are you checking out are you finding yes. it on the website I am finding yeah, it all see, out right yeah yeah see so you can find out all that stuff I mean it's all it's all on there but Travis Porter Matt Miller bro you guys are cool. <laughs> a lot of schools do this stuff, so it's not just us. But the nice part is, is that when you're in Keene, because like I said, and this is this is what I mean about coming up and seeing that, you know, when you think about a campus that's all white kids, <laughs> you yeah. probably are like, well, they wouldn't have something that I would relate to yeah. there. That's not the case. Um, now, granted, Janae's African American from Connecticut. <laughs> she was doing yeah. that concert, and you know, but it went out to the student. It went out to the student population to select it though. So yeah. the student populated voted on it. Janae found them, who, like, here are the artists that we're going to look at, but the student population are the ones who brought So, you know, yep, it's one of those things. So anyway, so you can see all the stuff that goes on. If you go to the student activities page, you'll see everything. Like, you can see the events that are going on. Isn't that Big Sean? Yeah. See, like I said, like, here's the thing with college. 
And this is something, if you ask anybody this question, they're going to be able to show you things like this that have all that. We all do it. Okay? It's all about finding that fit. You know, Keen might be a fit, it might not be a fit. You got to come up and see it to know. We have the degree programs for you. Definitely. We have it. You got to find if the, if the culture, the climate, if all that stuff fits you. If it fits you, awesome. It could be a match. If it doesn't, there's a reason why there's 2,000 schools out there. You know, all I am is a conduit to get you the information you need and help you through any process that you need help with. And that includes, you know, if you're working with us, if you're working with other schools, if you're doing financial aid, you need help with that. Like, I do all that stuff. You guys probably have financial aid workshops here, right? I also have support for doing bilingual financial aid, you know, support. So if you have, you know, Spanish speakers or French speakers, we have people in our office that both speak Spanish or French. And so a lot of times I'll travel to schools just to have that extra body there for, you know, working with parents, working with students, all that kind of stuff. So I, I, I work in a lot of those areas. And so I'm here to support students in general. And then if Keen becomes your place, awesome, that's great. Come to Keen, I'll be there for you throughout your entire time there, even post-grad. Actually, I keep talking about Janae. Janae was a nursing student. She's actually down at Duke um, Medical doing her, her, she got a job there, um, making a lot of money, by the way. Like Duke, I didn't say Duke. Duke. Yeah, yeah, it's one of the best hospital, research hospitals in the country. Right. She's, she's killing it, but I, we were on the phone last night, you know, and she's been out of school for six months. Like, I stay in contact with my students, yeah. the ones that want to be in contact. Like, if you're just cool, just handle it if yourself, you can. Yeah. But I've been in close contact with her. Um, you know, that's what I'm here for, is just to support, answer questions, you know, whether it's for you, for your folks, whoever. Um, you know, that's kind of what I do. So. Um, what else do you guys want to know about? Is that enough involvement stuff, or do you want to hear more? I mean, there's so much stuff that goes on. Yeah. I think what I'm looking for the most is like yes, like what you can help me get like a good job in my future. But then I also want to have like a good college experience. Like I don't want to yeah. just pick yeah. something and then hate it and then like hate the job that I'm getting after. So it's like yeah. I just want to enjoy life while I'm doing what I want to do. Well, where we stand out in that area, you know, as talking specifically to King, is that unlike big big schools where if you go to like a real big school, you're gonna meet a ton of people, which is great, because meeting people, I, I honestly feel like the more people you know, the better off you're gonna be post-grad, period. Yeah. The more people you know. But you can only get to know really well so many people. Yeah. You only have a, a limited amount. So the thing that Keen does that's better than bigger schools is all of our students have opportunities to test drive what they're studying. You can't always do that at bigger schools because the opportunities are limited because of the population size. Mm -hmm. Our school's small enough that no matter what you study at the college, we can find you unique opportunities to see whether or not you really like that field in that moment. Now, will you like it 10 years down the road? And who knows? No yeah. one knows. And for you students, they're saying that you guys, when you graduate, are going to have anywhere from 10 to 15 different career paths before you hit your retirement career. So you're going to change not just jobs, but careers yeah. 10 to 15 times on average, That's which true. means there's a higher number and a lower number, right? So you could be the rare person that goes into your field, like Janae will be a nurse, the rest of her life she'll be a nurse, period. That's what she wanted to do when she got in. She is a rare bird for the students that are graduating right now. I think it has a lot to do with you know, those phones and TikTok, like yeah. <laughs> quick information all the time. I think that's why. Yeah. But the reality is you're probably gonna change career paths. So, so not only do you need an education that's gonna prepare you for your career, whatever that ends up being, but you need one that's gonna prepare you for change. Yeah. And that's kind of what our education is built around, is giving you that, that skill set outside with the other classes we require, about with the way we challenge you in class so that when you graduate, you have multiple options. Yeah. And that's really important. So that's the one thing that we do excel in. Now, is it the right fit for you? That's the question. You've yeah. got to decide that. Yeah. You know, you got to get to the schools that you're really interested in. You got to get to the campuses, see if they fit. You got to talk to people. You know, ask questions. Really get a sense of whether or not it's the right fit. And then you got to apply. You got to, you know, get your responses back. You got to check yeah. the financial aid, see if it's even doable. Like all of those things go through. And then finally, you come with the school that you can go to. You can afford to go to. You love it. And bam, there you go. And then you take off. And you'll find it. Yeah. I changed my major six times, yeah. <laughs> and I ended up right back where I started. <laughs> so it's just the way it is. So I have three minors. Like it's crazy. It's crazy. I don't want to be that kid, but I am that kid. Um, and that's okay. It's like I want the full out college experience. That's like my thing. I want to have a good time at college. Yeah. Obviously, I got to graduate. I need to study at school. They also really want that side. Yeah, like, I understand that. Listen, I go back a hundred times. I have that side. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I was a fraternity I brother. Like, See, that's what I wanted. I wanted me a sorority. That's my thing. And that's okay to do it. You just got to do it for the right reasons. It's, exactly. And that's the key thing. Like, it's all about the bonding. It's all about meeting people. And really, you use it for networking. Like, that's what you use it for. Like, that's one of my favorite things. The other day, I'm, I'm sitting in my office and I'm answering phones because we take turns answering phones. So, pick up the phone. This guy's on the phone. He's a former um, Keen student who now works in the film industry. We have a film program at Keen's where people make movies. And he's doing this huge push in the film. He wants to come back and hire a bunch of our students to work for him, either as interns or as employees, right? So we're in, the, we're in conversation, and I find out that he's a Teague brother from Keene. Now, I'm not, I didn't go to Keene. I went to a private school out west, but I'm a Teague brother from out there. So as soon as we made that connection, it was like, bam, networking opportunity right there. So I've already we've gone out to dinner. We've done a bunch of stuff with this professional in the film industry. Who knows if I'll ever need it? But now I have this connection in the film industry. If I have a student that needs it for a contact or, or something else, that I can contact any time because of the brotherhood that I created at another institution, but it's just the acronym that put us together, right? That's what the, the that's the benefit of being involved in an, an organization. It doesn't have to be a sorority, but it can be a sorority. And if you do it right, there's all the fun stuff. Like let's talk about it. Yeah, you can go to a party with a bunch of girls. That's great. You can do that kind of stuff. You can you can you know socialize. You can hang out together. You'll have all that time. But you also have a national affiliated organization that spans throughout the U.S that you can connect with. Like, I know I drove across campus when I was in college. The Teague fraternity is the biggest fraternity in the country. Mm -hmm. We never paid for a hotel. We never paid for a meal. We stayed at the fraternity houses <laughs> across this, uh, the country, ate for free, slept for free, most of the time in a bed, which was crazy, because we were sleeping in people's houses. <laughs> it was nuts. But we met hundreds of people that we still keep in contact with. You know? So cool. Cute. Yeah, and a lot of people think like fraternities and sororities are like the movies where they're like, yeah, no. there, are, there are some. There are some. I know that. But not all of them. <laughs> let's not, let's not say that no. not. Trust me, I know. But, but you <laughs> but just want to make sure you get to the organization like, for the right reasons. Yeah, so you want to make sure get into the right ones for the right reasons. Not like get into like the crazy, crazy it's drought. Like, it's not all animal house. <laughs> yeah, I was like, not all of them are animal houses now. That's right. But that's some right. of them actually keep themselves together. <laughs> yeah, and that's important. Like, and that's an experience that you want to have. You should have it. Yeah. It's really making me want to spend more than 20 grand on YouTube. <laughs> listen, listen, apply for financial aid, see what it's going to cost. Just see. And the other thing that's an awesome opportunity, if cost is prohibitive for the school you want to go to, do two years of community college. Knock it out. Yeah, that's And what, then just transfer in. I feel like if I can't, like, if I calculate everything and see, like, because I'm pretty sure, me and my family, we're, like, middle class. Like, sure. we can afford things, but we can't. I don't know if we can afford all four years of college. Sure. So I like need to figure out, I probably will start off at a community college and then transfer, yeah. just to see where I start, like where I can start and everything. Because I don't want to, because my dad, he's most likely going to help me pay for it. Right. So I don't want to overwhelm him and then like I have more siblings. So it's like, I don't want to feel like he has to pay for everything. Like, and that's, and like that's that. a fine start. It'll yeah. save you a fortune. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, and you have, and you have, you know, you have great programs. Like uh, most of the classes transfer anyway, so you don't have to worry about that. And, and I mean, for us, like if you get to see your bed in the class, it's going to transfer. What it comes in as will vary, you know, whatever. But the reality is, is that you can get half of your degree done, and then you only have two years of this more expensive, you know, experience to finish out your degree. I have no problem with that. I think more students should do it. I wish they'd make community college free everywhere. Mm -hmm. I know, isn't it free for people who are in Pell Range here in, in the state of Mass? I think it is, and I know Connecticut did that, and so, you know, I, I think it's a viable option, and people shouldn't stub their nose at, at, at community college. Like, I have some of my best students in New Hampshire who are going to community college first. You know, some of my straight A, all AP classes, like crazy, you know, smart kids, top of their class, that they're making an educated decision to go to community college, get two years out of the way, and then go to a four-year school just to save money. Yeah. You know, How does that work? How does that work? So I'm pretty sure you start your two years at the community college yeah. and then you can transfer your credits to mm -hmm. the university. Yeah, or your degree because sometimes, so, so if you get an associate's degree, some schools will automatically award you 60 credits with an associate's um, and they'll erase the gen ed program. With us, you have to take two more classes out of our gen ed, but then the rest just takes, takes the place of it. Or you can go for, like say for instance, you really think you can afford you know, three years of college after you apply. And you should still apply to all your four years so that you can see what they're going to cost because that will give you more of a sense of yeah. what, you're, what you're trying to do. 
But say you can afford three years, but that first year you can do You can transfer after a year, you can transfer after a semester, you can do three semesters. Like, it's up to you when you transfer. It's really just, you know, you filling it out. I do think that going for the two years is a big benefit if you're going to go because you can complete that associate's degree, but it depends on what you can do. Like if you're doing nursing and you can get your, your two-year RN degree, awesome. Then you can do your BSN degree, you know, in an RN to BSN, you know, transition program, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. um, you know, but if you're doing more general ed, you know, you can make a decision when you want to transfer. So, but it does work really nice. I mean, and you say community colleges are, are crazy cheap compared yeah. to four-year schools. Yeah. You know, in-state or out-of-state, you're going to save money. Not gonna lie, the first like representative I heard, that was like pro Greek life. That's just like sticking in my head. Like, because oh. of my experience, that I mean, I had the right experience. I, I yeah. went to a school that had good organizations, national network. I, there's things you can look for, and I got to visit my school overnight as a part of a flying program because I was I was a really good student coming out of high school, and so I got flown into the school I went to as a part of a uh, it was actually a diversity weekend. Um, with a bunch of other students, and so I got to actually go to the fraternity houses during that time. And the reason why I chose my fraternity is because it was the only one that wasn't trying to force feed me alcohol, oh, which yeah. I thought was really cool. Force, that they did you know, they they offered. I said no, and for somehow, and I don't know why they did this. Maybe this was part of their recruitment technique, or if I came, but everybody at the fraternity knew at that point that I did not want any, and they never asked me again. It was unreal. It was unreal, and, and those guys, some of those guys that I met that year, because that was right before I, I graduated from high school, were some of my best friends through college, the guys who were there before me, um, which is crazy, you know, it's crazy, but they respected my decision. Now, I don't know if that was just the way they were or what, it seemed like it was the way they were, because I didn't drink until, until deep into college, um, you know, and I was an athlete, I played basketball, so that was my focus. Um, so yeah, so uh, anyway, like, you gotta find the right place. Mm -hmm. That's the big thing, the right organization. They gotta make you feel at home, you gotta feel comfortable with the girls and all that stuff. I always feel bad for me about because when they look at me like, you wanna be a group life, like, yeah, I do, you don't look at me. There's nothing wrong with that. Some are I sit there and I look at the big group, you know, organizations, like the ones, especially the sororities that are like national and they're big, you know, they got the big houses in like Alabama and Arkansas and those, those schools, you know, the big group schools. The sisterhood amongst them Ooh. is unbelievable. It's, it's unbelievable. And they're, they're, like they wear, they have their letters up on their wall. Like, well, our, our chief diversity offer, uh, officer at Kent State, who's like a you know VP level person, she's on the cabinet and everything. She has her Greek letters on the wall from her sorority. Oh, yeah, I know what you're talking about. Think of Lee All right, you guys have been here for a long time. Yeah. <laughs> Don't you have to go to class? Yes, but honestly, talking about this means I'm, I have to name that class. Well, hey, you guess what? You have my business card. You can email me any questions you have. Absolutely.